Hello everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at using the built-in Bluetooth of an ESP32 to emulate a Bluetooth keyboard. With some ESP32 development boards starting at less than $5 delivered, this is a really inexpensive and simple way to create wireless custom keyboards such as macro keypads that could be used for controlling scenes in OBS. We'll first look at how to use the ESP32 HID keyboard library, and then I will show you how I use this to build a battery-powered Bluetooth macro keypad. There is a gist floating around of using Bluetooth HID on the ESP32 with no external libraries, but the GitHub user TVK has written a library that makes it more like the standard Arduino keyboard library, which makes it much easier to use. The library is not available on the library manager, so you will need to download it from GitHub. Normally you can download libraries using the clone or download button, but the instructions of the library say to download the latest release version, so we'll do that. Once downloaded, you can add it to the Arduino IDE by going to Sketch, Include Library, and then Add Zip to Library. Once that's added, we can open up the example that comes with it. It's a pretty nice example as it demonstrates a few things you can achieve with the library, but I'll also add in a little more detail where I think it would be useful. In the setup, it begins the Bluetooth connection, at this stage, it should be available to pair with your device. In the loop, once it's connected, it will first type hello world. After a second, it will write the return key. This is basically emulating a single press of this button. You can open up the ble keyboard.h file of the library to see all the keys that are defined like this. You can also send ASCII characters by putting them in single commas. Another thing that might be useful to send is media keys, such as play, pause, or changing the volume so you can control media players. This is similar to the return key example, and you can see a list of the available ones in the header file too. The final thing the example shows is how you can press and hold keys. This is useful for creating macro keyboards. The example shown here is for control, alt, and delete. You can see it presses all these keys for 100 milliseconds and then calls release all, which you can probably guess by the name, releases all the pressed keys. You can also release specific keys if you want, either by using the release command with the key you want to release. That covers the example from the library, but there were a couple of other things that I think might be useful to know. It's always best to control a HID device like this using an external trigger such as a button press. If you use a timer and something goes wrong, it might be awkward to disconnect. By default, the device name will show up as ESP32 BLE Keyboard. This can be changed when you're creating an instance of the library. You can set the device name, manufacturer, and initial battery level. Speaking of battery level, the library claims you can set the battery level by using set battery level, but it didn't work for me on my Windows PC. It always stayed with whatever the initial value was, and my Android phone didn't show the level at all. As for compatibility, I've ran some basic tests on my Windows PC, my Android phone, and my MacBook, although that is still running Sierra somehow. That's embarrassing. I guess tomorrow just never came. One thing to note is that it can only be paired to one device at a time, so disconnect it from your phone first before trying to connect it to your PC. My PC does not have built-in Bluetooth, so I just use a USB dongle, which I'll link below. If you're having some issues pairing, try restarting the ESP32 while your device is searching. I also once had to turn on and off my Bluetooth of my PC to get it to pair. Okay, now that we have the basics out of the way, let's make a simple practical build. In a previous video, we took a look at building the simplest macro keypad out of an Arduino Pro Micro and a cheap keypad. For each button on the keypad, it sends a different combinations of buttons, which can be used to control applications. Personally, I use it for OBS, the software I use for recording videos and for when I stream. This seems like a good project to port over to the ESP32 so we can make a wireless version. For this build, I'm going to use Unexpected Maker's Tiny Pico ESP32 board. The main reason for choosing this board is it is very power efficient and has the circuitry for running off and charging a LiPo battery built in, so all we need to do is plug the battery in. I'd be lying if the fact that it has the same row spacing as a Pro Micro and I could make use of this already soldered breakout board I made previously wasn't also appealing. So first things first, let's make sure we can get it working. 
The keypad requires eight GPIO pins to operate, and the Tiny Pico has eight GPIO pins in a row here, so we'll just use them. It doesn't matter which orientation you connect the keypad, but if you want to keep it consistent with mine, you should connect it like this. Now let's take a look at the required changes to my original macro keypad sketch. I'll go over the changes here, but there will be more comments on the version on GitHub if you need more info. First thing we need is to replace the keyboard library reference with this new BLE keyboard one. We then need to update the pins of the keypad so it matches with the Tiny Pico. When looking at the keyboard from the front, the row pins start on the left and then followed by the column pins. We now create an instance of BLE keyboard and call begin in the setup. BLE keyboard and the original keyboard library contain nearly all of the same methods. So here in send macro command, we can just replace the keyboard with BLE keyboard for these press calls. In the loop, there is no point trying to send any keys unless we're connected to our target device. So we'll just add a check for that in the main if statement. All that's left to do is to update the release all call at the end to use our BLE keyboard and that should be it. I would absolutely recommend testing it at this stage, but I'm just going to use some movie magic and save that for after we connect the battery, because there's not much point having it communicating via Bluetooth if it still needs to be plugged in using USB. As mentioned earlier, the Tiny Pico has circuitry for handling a LiPo built in, so all we need to do is connect it up. The Tiny Pico comes with JST connectors that can be soldered to the bottom, or you could use the bat and ground pin if you wanted to do it via the pins. If you're using the JST connectors, please double check the polarity of your battery matches that of the Tiny Pico. There's no standard for how these should be wired, so there is a good chance your battery might not match. Luckily, I found a battery with the same polarity and it matched the larger JST connector of the Tiny Pico, so I soldered it up. I then tested the voltage of the battery to make sure it was still okay. A healthy cell should be around 3 volts or higher. This measured 0 volts. Whoops. I probably should have checked that before soldering the JST connector. No harm, I have this very genuine looking 18650 cell that still reads okay, so I put that in a holder and soldered it to the dead battery's JST connector. I should have used this opportunity to add a power switch, and I forgot, but I have a very high tech solution for this, cardboard. The Tiny Pico reduces its power consumption when running off battery by not having any of its LEDs on. So even if it doesn't look on, hopefully it is. A future improvement of this project might be to pulse the onboard dot star LED on startup just to let you know it actually turned on, and maybe do it again when it connects to a device. For now you can check in your system's Bluetooth menu that it is on and it connected OK. Speaking of improvements, the Tiny Pico also supports reading the battery's voltage, so a future improvement might be updating the battery level using the library if we manage to figure out how to do this, because as I said earlier, I couldn't see it working. Let's test it out. If I open the hotkeys portion of OBS, I can click on different actions to record a button combination that will control it. For this, we can just click on the button on our keypad and it will update the action. After you click apply, you should now be able to use the keypad to control your scenes in OBS. Hopefully you found this video useful. Do you have any questions or things that I didn't cover? Or if you have any suggestions of what you could use to build with this, I'd be really interested to hear about it. You can get in touch with me either in the comments below, or if you want to join me and a bunch of other helpful makers on my Discord channel, there'll be a link for that in the description too. You can talk about this video or any tech-related type things. I would also like to give a huge thanks to my GitHub sponsors for helping support the channel. For those who don't know, GitHub are currently matching sponsorships, so if you make a sponsor in the next few months, they will match it 100%. And that's it from me. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.